Hey everyone, my name is Peyton and in this video I would like to show you how to set up a light function like this that basically resembles a projector and this one I'm specifically using in my actual movie theater uh, kind of environment that I was working on so uh, we're going to get started here and here we are in the actual environment. Um, yeah, as you can see right now, I uh, just have like a default one up there, uh, just the, the white screen. Um, and basically what I want to do is kind of get started with the, the process of setting something up like this. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind uh, with the light functions overall is um, it's going to take a combination of trickery with this. Um, we can, of course, use this actually for projection, um, but overall, I think I really like uh, how the screen's already working in here. And so my purpose of using the light function, um, basically using it through a uh, spotlight is to get those same sort of fog shapes that we imagine, um, but without actually necessarily uh, needing to do all the uh, other elements to get it to yeah work perfectly on the screen. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with just a side um, like environment over here. Uh, and this is basically just so we can uh, test out some of the um, like lights or so that we wanted to play around with. So yeah, literally just throwing this out and then I'll just move this over and then we just need a roof and should be good. So I'm gonna throw one of these guys up there and boom, so yeah. Um, light functions, so I'm going to start by, can have a point light in here or whatever. Um, but a light function is actually a function or a feature that you can actually add to an existing light. Um, and what it can do is, at least in this case, is we can actually edit it uh, through the material to change the attributes and kind of the view of uh, what we currently have. Um, so I'm going to start with a spotlight, which is what we are going to probably use for um, the projection and so I want to crank that up and one thing you'll notice is that I am already getting this fog you most likely won't be getting this um, and reason being is because you probably need to go to your exponential height fog and you need to turn on uh, volumetric fog so I'm going to go here and yeah, basically turn this on. Um, I am using ray tracing, global illumination, lumen, um, all in here. So those are all turned on in the project settings. Um, and so uh, yeah, then I just basically went over to my exponential height fog, which I already had in the scene. Um, and it's set to a decent like level. It's not like super thick, but um, yeah, basically switched it over from the default fog that we had to um, using the volumetric fog and so you can see in this space even um, these lights are giving off a sort of like very subtle uh, fog happening up there so um, yeah we have our light here as you can see and it is providing that sort of glare and working pretty well um, like i said the actual light functions these are generally plugged into the location here that we can see where it says like light function material. Um, and this is just gonna be a very simplified version of what light functions are and how we're gonna use it. Um, thankfully, uh, per the previous video that we kind of um, built off of, uh, I have my, under my materials down here, might need to go to something else. Um, just need to find, yeah, okay, cool. So these are my video player um, videos. So if I click here, we can see that the video that I want, and I can go into my media player that we kind of had set up. And this is where I would have um, my different videos, like the whale and everything. Um, and so, yeah, basically that's all good. And how I wanted to actually set this up is, since this is just a basic um, material, I technically just um, right click this and hit duplicate. And so let's say this is going to be our light function. And 
we'll do a so that way we have one um, and what I need to do in the material uh, whether you create a new material or um, edit an existing one so you need to click here and then change the actual material domain from surface over to light function you'll see that you'll lose all features except for a miss of color um, and for our case here we aren't going to be using anything else um, so we're going to hit uh, apply so let me see um, and oh one thing that I did have a problem with um, is that uh, yeah the previous material that we had um, set up uh, had it set to mast um, so I do need to switch that off uh, over to opaque and then from surface go down to light function and say cool so now we have this plugged in this is our video like I was mentioning um, and we'll kind of dive into uh, yeah, getting this set up with our screen. And while we are on the topic of new technology, I want to mention how important it is to keep safe and up to date with online risks and your personal security. For me, I feel like it is every week where I hear from a friend or relative that has been impacted by personal information being stolen. Data brokers sell that information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, relatives, it's all out there on the internet. And that's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T actually revealed recently that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit bureaus. Well, thankfully Aura does all this for me, and best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep my data secure. If my info was compromised in the AT&T data breach, I wouldn't worry because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I value my privacy and I also value yours. You can go to aura.com forward slash Peyton Varney, which is also linked below in the description to start your two week free trial and see how Aura could start saving you today. And back to the video, uh, actually talking about kind of diving into some of this other stuff with the projection. Um, we have our material and everything set up here. We have this here and we'll get the video going in a second. Um, and going to exit out of that. And all I have to do for this is actually go over here and um, plug it in basically. So I'm going to go down and find the light function material and you just drag it in. And now this actually has the light function. So of course we have the gray um, like environment right now. Uh, so that's not really working, but uh, yeah. There we go. And what I can do real quick is just uh, pick one of the videos to show you uh, a sort of an example of what we have going so far. Um, so I'll do the whale and you can see that immediately we have uh, the whale showing up on the wall and uh, we're already getting light distortion in the volumetric fog, which is pretty cool. So there we go. I'm gonna close out of this and go back over here. But one thing you'll notice is that, um, yeah, we're not really getting the color to come through. Um, and I just did a really kind of like quick hack to get this to work easily. And it also allows me to do like, uh, like chromatic aberration if I wanted to or distort it to kind of change it from just a normal video or so. Um, and so what I did with that is I actually did um, basically turn it into a blueprint. So I went over here, um, right clicked, did blueprint, and then it pops up with the blueprint class. I'm going to select an actor and I'm just gonna name it uh, the projector. So, and I'll name it a uh, different one because I think the other one's already named projector. So I can double click on this and yeah, I'm just going to basically copy what we have here already. Um, let me grab 
like that. Um, or I guess the other way you could also do it is um, spotlight. And yeah, so we have this and now I can bring in that material that we created. So I'm gonna go here, bring this in, compile. And now if I go back over here to my projector B, I can have my, um, yeah. So I'm gonna go back into the, um, the actual blueprint and I'm gonna crank up the intensity quite a bit. That way we can actually see it on the wall. Um, just going to rotate it. And you'll notice that, uh, yeah, it's just one color. So the quick way that I was able to um, resolve that is basically um, setting the uh, color for each of them and making three different lights of each color. Um, the, yeah, basically run through here, go over here and you can just make a mask, uh, component mask and drag from here and then drag from here and then I could just select the red channel um, so that's going to be my red channel and I'm going to then um, go down here and just set the red to be one uh, the rest of those set to zero so we just have our red there and then I'm going to uh, duplicate this uh, three to, or two other times. So I'm going to do this there we go. And then um, with this one, what I need to actually do is right now, this material is, um, let's see, open here. And I'm going to um, duplicate that and then, yeah, that'll work for now. Change this to green and then duplicate that and then change this to blue. Not the cleanest way of going about it, but um, yeah, works for what we're wanting. Um, then going to drop on these different materials to each one. So this one should be my first one, this should be my second one, and then this should be my third one. And so now all I need to do is make sure that this should be my green one. So uh, with this spotlight, I'm gonna go and change this to green, turn that one off, and then hit okay. And then with the third one, so right here, I'm gonna change this one to blue, hit okay, and and of course this actual, um, this environment, it's gonna seem super blue, but that's actually because the video was super blue. So you can see that, um, yeah, now we're getting some variation between the colors and we have our proper like RGB. Um, so, and like I said, if you did want to actually have, like have slight chromatic aberration, you can like offset these. Um, makes a weird effect that we don't actually want on our projector, but um, yeah for those purposes of like, if you're doing an older like school projector or something, it could be pretty cool. Uh, but we have our three lights in here and starting to work with that. And like I said, um, this is kind of the main uh, look that I was wanting was that uh, just value variation in the, um, the fog and getting it to line up with the video as well. Um, so, when the video plays, it actually lines up properly with that. So um, yeah, this one, same exact setup um, with how the projector was kind of built. Um, but as you see, if I were to go in and hit edit projector, um, just gonna go over real quick to my material. Now let's just kind of drop this down real down here. And yeah, if I play a different video, which you can see here with this car, um, we're getting all the 
values that we would imagine or that's actually on the screen and they're showing up at the same time, um, which I think is really important um, to get that read to really work. Um, here's the woods one as well. So we can see, yeah, all those green tones kind of hitting, just giving a really nice like overall uh, like rays coming out of here um, to cast on the wall. So um, yeah, that's basically how I set up this simple um, just projector look. Like I said, I still liked using the media player for the wall. And once I get like more lighting and kind of like integration into this, it'll um, look better as well. But uh, the main thing is that I did want it to um, you know, actually show up here where I had the, uh, the actual like kind of cast volume through the volumetric fog to show those colors and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, hope you found that video helpful and, uh, I'll see you in the next one.